Hello and welcome to another exciting breakfast with Unity. So, um, on our last episode, we we didn't get done what we wanted to, but I actually finished it up after the fact. So I just wanted to show you the state of this real quick before we move on to interact. And I promise that today's won't run run as long. I've actually done something like this before, so hopefully hopefully things will be a little bit smoother. So, first of all, I changed the particle volume to be a cube um, as opposed to rendering from a cylinder because I needed to have all the particles actually being in the in around the area that we wanted to uh, to isolate with our script. And if we hit play right now, you'll see that we have this really rather nice particle system effect um, where it actually looks like the particles are in, this, in the room space and you can look around and you'll see them reflect off of things. And, um, and so we were actually close when we were last time in the script. Um, we had done something similar to this where we got the particle vector by getting the, the offset from the transform position. Um, what I had done wrong is before I had multiplied the rotation in there, I actually wanted to multiply the inverse of that rotation so that brings this particle vector into uh, local space or quad quaternion identity space. And um, and then then remove the Z. Now, it, I, I would have had to remove, remove the Y if we were still doing the uh, cylinder one just because of the way that things pointed. Um, when I switched to the, uh, the cube, I just put the Z forward, so we're removing the Z. And then I had to transform it back by doing the uh, the thing that I'd done before, where I'd tra uh, tra multiply and transform dot rotation. So in this case, it, we're, we're transforming it away from where we were at, and this is putting it back to the same space that we were at. And then we just throw in the magnitude of uh, of this object, and then the fall off fall off uh, setting works fine, and everything works fine, and everything's happy. So um, so this works if you want to play around with it. So. What we're going to do now, I'm actually going to duplicate this level again just because um, we need a first person level and it's actually a good choice because it's kind of dark in here. So um, I'm going to just, uh, I'm just going to duplicate this folder, who cares, and we'll just delete this script that we don't need in here, and we'll call this um, interact. And I'm going to call this interact. So what we're going to do today is pretty simple. We're going to um, put a little switch on this block here and make it so that if you get close enough to it, it brings up a little prompt to interact with it. And um, when you interact with it, it turns on a light in the room. So um, so we're going to not spend a whole lot of time on modeling here. So we're going to make our button a little sphere. Um, so we're just going to create a 3D object sphere. And do we have any materials? Uh, materials. I think we've got a lot of materials. Is um, let's see what we got here. Ah, uh, we'll just make a new one. Uh, create material red. All right, and then we're going to put this on our sphere that we just made, red. And we're going to put our sphere someplace where we can actually see it. So I'm going to, uh, I forget what the move is. I think it's, um, if we grab this thing by the middle and hold command, no, no, that's that's for snapping. Hold shift. There we go. No, that's not it either. Shift and command. There we go. So that'll make it so that it goes onto the surface. So I'm just gonna put it on the surface here. Shrink it down. Point one. Point one. Point one. All right. So that looks like a little little uh, interactable thingy. And um, let's see if let's see how hard that is to actually hit with our. Yeah, that'll be fine. Cool. So there's our button. Um, I'm gonna call this button. All right, so we're gonna create a script, C sharp script, and what this is gonna do is um, we're going to do the logic for interacting with this light. Actually, let's let's do the let's do the ray casting first. So this is um, um, I'm just gonna call this the interact script. And we're going to have a couple of variables, public float distance and public uh, float um, or public uh, um, layer mask um, interactables. Um, interactable mask is what I'm going to call it. Actually, I'm just going to call it layer mask. Layer mask. All right, so uh, what we're gonna do is in update, 
we're going to first put a little message on the screen when we can interact with something, and so we need to detect if we can. So if um, uh, physics.raycast, um, and we need a ray, so we're going to do, well, we don't need a ray, we can do origin direction, and we're going to need a layer mask, So and we're going to need distance as well. So origin direction, distance, layer mask, that's what we want. Um, and actually, we will also need um, the hit info. So we need this one. Origin direction, hit info, distance, layer mask. Origin direction, hit info, distance, layer mask. All right. So it's transform.position. Uh, transform.position. I'm never going to remember the order. Uh, transform. Dot, transform. Lowercase, please. Dot forward. Um, layer mask, I think. Uh, just the lowercase, please. Um, so where were we at? Hit info. No, it was hit info. Then distance and the layer mask. I had it completely wrong. So out hit. We'll define that in a moment. Um, and distance is distance, which was the thing we defined a moment ago, and the layer mask. So there's uh, one more thing that I didn't uh, finish here. We need to actually make this hit here, so we're going to do um, raycast hit, hit, um, and um, so now we should have information if we hit something. So um, all I'm going to do right now is we're just going to uh, set uh, a flag here, private uh, bool um, display interact equals false. So in this case we're going to say display inter uh, yeah display interact um, equals true is what we want. And uh, else display interact whoops display interact equals false. Um, finally, um, I want to make the layer mask a good default. So a good default for layer mask is negative one. This makes it so that it just collides with everything by default. And um, distance is, um, we're going to set this to 1.0 F for the default. And uh, so if we hit save, oh yeah, we have to do one more thing. We have to actually show this thing. So void on GUI, we're just going to do it as a little temporary thing. And uh, uh, we're going to do GUI, GUI layout dot, why is that not auto-completing? Huh. Oh, because this needs to be there. Let's try that. GUI lay. there we go. GUI layout dot, um, uh, let's just do label. Um, Press E to interact. Actually, let's just say press fire one to interact. And uh, we only want this to show if display interact equals equals true. All right, so this is the first part of things, just displaying it. Save. So if we hit play right now, um, we have a problem because I've got an extra semicolon here for some reason. I don't want to get rid of that. Okay, whatever. Um, so oh, I didn't save. Save. That fix it. Okay, cool. Uh, and then I should attach the script. So let's attach the script to. Um, so the main camera is what's doing the laser dot, right? Project laser. Yeah. So that's what we'll put the interact on main camera. So we hit play, and uh, oh yeah, we need to do one more thing. Um, so right now, if we if we hit play and we like look at the ground after it loads in the uh, okay fire one to interact. So if we point at anything right now, it will say fire one to interact. I want to actually pull that uh, distance out a little bit. So let's make the distance uh, two, and we're going to change the layer mask to uh, well we don't have a mask that we want, so we want to go to our button. Choose layer, add layer. We're going to call this uh, interact. 
and we're going to go into our main camera again. Um, not main camera. We want to go into the button, set the layer to interact, and then we're going to go to the main camera and we're going to set it so that it layer mask is nothing and we set it to interact. So now if we hit play, if we look at the ground, nothing happens. But if we come over to this button, press fire one to interact. I'm actually going to move the button down just a little bit. Um, button, just make this a little bit more eye level. All right, cool. So we have it displaying the message when we're there. So now if we, um, <coughs> um, all right, so we do this. I guess we technically don't need the hit. Uh, oh yeah, we do, we do. Um, so, uh, so if we're in here, um, display interact equals true, and we're going to do another check now. So we're going to need a uh, public string uh, button name equals fire one, save. And uh, so if we hit with the raycast, we want to also check to, uh, to see what we hit and send a message to it if we're clicking the button, so or if we're hitting the button. So if input dot get button down, um, uh, button name. So if we're pressing that button and we're already in this thing that means we've hit something, we will send a message to the thing that we hit. So we're going to do hit dot game ob uh, hit dot collider dot send message. Um, and uh, what we're going to say is uh, interact. And we're going to make it so this does not require a receiver. Actually, no, let's make it so it requires one. So if you have said something to interact, you'll get an error if you try to interact with it and it doesn't have a receiver. So what I mean by that is if we go up to here, we can test this now. If we get to our button and hit fire one, we see that it says send a message interact has no receiver. That means that whatever button you just set up isn't set up properly. So um, I'm going to make this button a little bit easier to hit. Um, the way we're going to do that is just make the radius bigger even though we're not changing the graphics. So this will make it a little bit easier for our colliders to hit. So um, what else are we doing? Um, so now we need to actually make something interact. So create a C Sharp script. We're gonna say activate uh, game uh, toggle um, game objects on interact. Uh, why does this keep coming up? All right, so on here, we're going to, uh, what is it going to do? Um, public, um, public game object array, um, game objects to act, to toggle, and private floats, um, Enable, um, let's see, active now equals false. I didn't want to call it something that might overlap with things that are built into Unity. So, so this will just give us the things that we're going to toggle. Um, all we're going to do is an update, not an update. We're not going to do update at all. We're going to do void interact. And all we're going to do in interact is, um, um, for each, um, active now equals, does not equal, wait, what's the trick for, hold on, toggling a bool, C sharp, all right, this will be good. Yeah, that's what I thought, okay, I had a little bit wrong, but, so, um, equals not active now. So what this does is this means that if uh, this is true, it'll become false. If this is false, it'll become true. And um, and so now what we're going to do is um, for each uh, game object obj in game objects to toggle um, obj dot enable uh, obj dot set active active now save. 
So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to throw this on our button. Oh, wait, not yet. False cannot be converted into a float. Oh, pff, ghoul. <laughs> Save. And we're going to throw this onto Sizzle Compiles. Yay. We're going to throw this onto our um, button. And then we're going to create a light source. I'm just going to create a um, 3D object. No, light, point light. We'll just do that. And we'll make it so that it turns on the light here. Actually, let's make it so that it has ground effects. That's, 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 that looks cool. And then we'll make the light red to correspond with the button. And um, we're going to turn this thing off. And then when we go into our uh, button here, we've got the gain objects to toggle. We just drag in our point light. And if everything works properly, save scene, we should have a button that interacts properly. So if we go up here, press fire one to interact, there's our light. Press fire one to interact, there the light goes away. And uh, it won't work if uh, you aren't looking at the switch. So there we go. And that's how you create and interact in Unity 3D for first person games. Um, you could do a very similar thing. We might do this in the future as well. For third person games, typically you don't actually interact with buttons on the screen. Um, uh, what will happen is if you get near a button, if you get inside of a hot box, they actually put an invisible box around it that it brings up the interact prompt. It's the same concept, just different reason to bring up the prompt. So hopefully you enjoyed the episode. Uh, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com if you have any questions. Um, you can also tweet me at Drakfire. Uh, questions don't have to be about Unity. We, you can talk, you know, game development in general, programming, you know, games, whatever. Uh, whatever you want to talk about. And, um, and donate to us on Patreon. If you donate to us on Patreon, you get access to the, uh, the uh, super secret uh, Cooking with Unity super repo. Um, and uh, with that access, you'll, you'll have access to a few things that I've made. Right now, it's just a, a DLL in there. Though I have started a project um, for Halloween, so if you want to see what I'm working on for Halloween, um, go ahead and donate. You only have to donate a dollar a month, and you could just you know donate a dollar and just cancel your subscription after a month if you don't like it. So, um, thank you very much, and you guys have a great one. I will see you tomorrow in the morning for another episode of Breakfast with Unity. See you then.